Welcome back, everyone, to episode 9 of the Alton Podcast, where I'm going to try to be better at this now. We are available to be heard on all streaming platforms. Oof. That includes Spotify, Breaker, Apple Podcasts, and Google Podcasts, to name just a few. Ooh. We're also on YouTube. Oh, yes. Do us a solid, you know, like, share, subscribe on all content across all platforms if you can. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think YouTube is the easiest for us to see comment feedback the mm-hmm. fastest. Yes. And then don't forget about our Discord. How's Colton doing today? Colton is doing pretty well. How are you, my guy? I am doing pretty okay, man. I can't complain. Another another busy day at our home desk office here. Oh, yes. Um, you know who's not having a good day? Is it the UN? It is the United Nations. <laughs> You're completely correct, man. <laughs> uh, and that is today's topic. The United Nations, everybody, could run out of money in the next few weeks. Will the United Nations go bankrupt? That's what we are going to talk about today. Austin, lead us on here. Let us know what's going on. What's wrong with the UN right now? So they're not getting paid is what's happening right now. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I had to really do some research and digging because mm-hmm. before I saw this article, I, I don't know much about political governmental entities. Same. And what's going on in the world. Right. Um, so I did some research. I learned a few things. So forgive me if my numbers are a little off and skewed. <laughs> um, but, you know, I'm noticing kind of a, a common trend that I'm seeing. And that's that the Trump campaign is not paying their dues to the U.N. Mm-hmm. at this time. Because they feel that's unfair how much they're paying. They do pay 22% of the total uh, U.N.'s budget. Right. Which is pretty high considering it's 193 entities within that budget plan as well that also contribute Mm -hmm. so what do you think about that 22 percent comes from us yeah i mean just kind of naturally you kind of expect it because even though we are like 20 what three trillion dollars in debt um the u.s does generate the most revenue out of any other country on the planet so it does make sense that we are the major uh, chunk of that annual operating budget that gets sent to the United Nations. Um, But, you know, it, I don't know if it's unfair, but I can see why people would say it's unfair, especially Mm -hmm. people who live in the United States, Um, especially (laughs) when these other countries aren't forking their end of the commitment. Yeah, absolutely. What was that stat we saw, Colton? It was, here it is, 129 states out of the 193 have paid their regular annual dues. Mm-hmm. The problem is the U.S. is 22% of the annual dues. Right. And the numbers for that is right here. Washington owes some, I'm quoting an article I found online posted a day ago here. Ooh. So Washington owes some $381 million for prior regular budgets and then $674 million for the 2019 budget. Yeah. So quick math, almost like $1.2 billion. Right. Uh, which is a lot of money. Right. And they're saying that they may have to uh, run out of money to pay staff by next month, which means people are getting laid off. Mm-hmm. Um, did you know the UN's actually in New York? Really? That's what it said. Ah. Well, I Googled this. Oh, I had no oh, idea. Kind of just yeah. thought it was like out in the middle of the ocean where everybody meets, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why, but every time I hear the term United Nations or UN, I just think of like this random ass little conference out in the middle, like on a, a life raft or some shit. <laughs> on a life raft? <laughs> <laughs> okay, maybe not a life raft, but you get my point, right? <laughs> I get it, I get it. Uh, so yeah, the, the 22% that we're not paying right now is detrimental to what they do. Mm-hmm. Um, so I guess if they run out of money, yeah, what really happens? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, me and Austin were brainstorming this last night. Um, other than the price, like, what happens if the group that runs the entire planet just doesn't get their funds? Like, yeah. does the Earth just stop rotating? <laughs> Like, so I know they they control, like, peacekeeping and yeah. disarmament, you know, stuff like that. Right. So they kind of keep the peace of the world. Right. Uh, 
Which is good. Mm-hmm. So what happens? Are the, are the people that are doing harm to the world just going to say, oh, they can't stop us now because they're out of money. Let's go do all this bad things. Right. And that's one thing that is part of this cutting costs is that on top of postponing conferences and meetings, uh, this article I'm quoting from CBS News also says that they will be limiting um you know, peacekeeping services and uh, mm-hmm. finding ways for less travel and, you know, just in general, less help to the countries that need the most help. Absolutely. You know, with that article you mentioned, I'm going to bring up some stats to the boring part of the podcast. Right. But these uh, are important stats for this topic. Absolutely. They really are. So oh, yeah. this article's dated. It's about two years going on three years old now. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's the best... Um, data i could find yeah some solid so, data yeah it's good data yeah so contributions uh, wow contributions contributions <laughs> to the u.n regular budget and percentage 2016 2018 uh u.s of course highest number 22 percent the next closest is japan at 9.68 yeah so almost a 13 percent deficit margin right then it's china at 7.9 it goes all the way down to canada at 2.9 percent mm-hmm. Of the top 20 countries, they pay 83.78% of the total budget for the UN. And just for uh, clarification, there's 193 countries in this span of who's paying the UN every year for their annual budget costs. Exactly. So 173 countries are paying Mm 16.22%. So by what I read, some countries that are undeveloped, pay as little as 0.001% of the annual yeah. amount they use for the budget, which makes sense. Right, it does. Um, but I think, I don't know. I'm kind of torn. <laughs> at the same point, I see what you're saying. The U.S., we are a very economic society here. We right. do, do a lot of business. We make a lot of money here. Yeah. Uh, so I can see us having to fork over that 22%. Mm-hmm. But I could also semi- I gotta word this very carefully here. (laughs) I can semi agree with the part of the Trump campaign that's fighting to kind of change the numbers a little bit. Right. Because, you know, every country's in debt, Mm -hmm. which makes me mad because if I go in debt, it's a problem. Right. But I'm in debt with their debt money. Right. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, So, I can see the I can see the battle. I can see both sides. I hope that. uh, I don't want to see people have to get laid off. Right. That's never good. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I don't want to find out what happens if they go bankrupt. Right. Uh, I'd I'd pass on that. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, yeah. um, You know, like we were talking about the whole peacekeeping and everything. um, I'm sure they do stuff like on, uh, you know, the borders as well with like... um, medically treating people trying to come to the united states or come to these uh what are they called uh sanctuary cities yep yeah so i'm sure that's going to be limited and um you know it really depends on what happens here in the next month Uh, is this other let's see here 30 percent of the annual budget going to be uh forked over by these uh let's see here about 60 other countries yeah, I, I don't know. Um, and, you know, honestly, like a lot of, I shouldn't say a lot of, but common global events that deal with the United States, it kind of all rests on us. Right. Um, which means it all rests on Trump. And we all kind of know from recent years mm-hmm. how that can sometimes go. Right. Um, I don't see him budging in this. Right. Being he's already near impeachment processes are going on anyway i mean yeah he really has nothing to lose right and Um, even on top of that let's be real he's a businessman he was a businessman before he was president obviously so he knows money he knows how to work with money he knows how to get money he knows how to save money um you know it's just common knowledge that he knows Mm -hmm. what he's talking about when it comes to money so I can definitely see him further fighting this to maybe get the U.S.'s percentage down, but also to raise the percentage of all these other countries, especially down to, what, 2% down to the Canada, right? Yeah. 
Yeah. I was surprised by only 2% from Canada. Yeah, I mean, what's the population of Canada? You know, offhand, I have no clue. <laughs> uh, I'm either. surprised China's only 7.9. Right. I mean, we're talking, what, one over 1 billion people over there? Exactly. And, and they have all the production in China. Right. Yeah. Um, if any, I mean, are they number two right now? No, Japan's oh, ahead Japan, of them. They're that's 9. right. 9.68. Right. Where is uh, Canada? Or not Canada, sorry. Where's so China? Number three. Number three. Okay. Um, China. I know you're talking about China. <laughs> yeah, right. We're right. Um, but yeah, it's very interesting to see how profitable, um, or not profitable, I should say. Uh, I should say more like economically lucrative these other countries are, and uh, especially population-wise. And how we're still forking over a major percentage of this, um, you know, giant annual budget. Yeah, and you know, so I'm noticing the budget seems to be 5.4 to 5.6 billion mm -hmm. yearly for them. Right. Uh, so I wonder, like, if we just dropped at 2%, say Trump gets ahead, we get 20% instead of 22%. Right. What has to happen to these countries below? You know? Yeah. So they can make 173 countries mm -hmm. pay a little bit more. Maybe, like, just doing quick, quick math here, 0, 0. 0. 0.005%, mm -hmm. which may not equal the full 2%. It may be slightly above that 2%, just throwing out some numbers here. Right. But would that 0.005% break those lower developed countries? I mean... I don't know. It really depends on which ones we're talking about and if those lower countries are even going to contribute to that 2%. Um, mm -hmm. I think definitely the top 10 can definitely contribute an extra 2%. Because um, what, 2% of 1.8 billion, which is about the number of the annual uh, contribution from the United States, uh, what is that, Austin? About 200 million-ish? Maybe, yeah. And honestly, just the top 20 countries, they pay 83.78%, like I said earlier. Mm -hmm. So if just the top 19, besides us, of course, yeah, took on that 2%, mm -hmm. that's really probably low numbers for them. Yeah. If they just shared it all equally, right. I don't think it'd be a problem. Right. And I'm actually going to do uh, my math here. Because um, you said <laughs> $1.8 billion, right? Oh, that was quick math. Yeah, about 1.8 billion. Yeah, so or, yeah, two percent is 36 million dollars of that, not 200 million. My bad. Um, so 36 million dollars, I think, is highly doable between, especially those top 10 um, countries sharing that percentage. Um, I'm sorry, guys. Sorry to cut you off. One, it's actually 1.1 billion. I just checked my math again, real quick. 1.1 billion. 381 million, and then 674 million. So about 1.1, yeah. a little yeah. less. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think just in general, those other top 10 countries can easily, you know, share that. Yeah, and 129 countries have paid their dues for 2019 so far, mm -hmm. which amounted to about $2 billion. Yeah. So 129 made $2 billion and we will make 50% of that. Right. Which is crazy to think about. Mm -hmm. And can we just talk about this annual operating budget of, uh, what, about $5 billion, 5 to $6 billion, yeah? Yep. Yeah, so Austin and I were spitballing this yesterday. Um, so, technically speaking, the whole Earth runs on just about $5.5 billion annually. And, Which is crazy. Right. I was thinking, that is like, low. You would think it would be so much more expensive. Um, and Austin, uh, what's your opinion on that? You know, I'd have to agree. I'm reading like... So as of July 2019, the U.S. paid, or the U.N., sorry, U.N. paid mm -hmm. $1,428 a month per soldier that they use for peacekeeping efforts. Yeah. So I can see how that adds up. Right. But I mean, even still, that's kind of low. Right. So think about it from like a job perspective. When I was making, let's see, I make about 14 an hour now. Mm-hmm. And if I work 40 hours a week, each week, 80 hours a paycheck, mm -hmm. I actually make more than 1428 
Right. I make about 1600 1650 mm-hmm. So if you think about it that way, these poor soldiers are getting paid almost nothing. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. And they're getting put in the worst areas. They mm-hmm. should be paid more. Yeah. I would be completely okay with a budget increase, honestly speaking. Right. Um, if they're paying those soldiers only that much money. Yeah. But can we even talk about a budget increase if 60 countries aren't even <laughs> paying it now? <laughs> Probably not. You know, there is uh, there is obviously a fine line somewhere. Um I'm sure the UN has had budget issues in the past, but this is probably the most uh, notable budget issue with so many mm-hmm. countries falling short. Um, I mean, it says only 70% of all these countries have been, you know, paying their dues this year um, with a short cash shortage of $230 million just by the end of September. Um, mm-hmm. So, I mean, it, you know, it's really hard to say. If we can even raise this budget, because, uh, I mean, personally speaking, with it being so low already, um, you know, it kind of just sounds like pocket change that these companies are putting forward. Absolutely. And, you know, this is being titled right now as the potential worst cash crisis of the next decade. Yeah. So... That's major. I mean, of course. this could, of course, topple down into an effect that we just don't foresee. We're not government people. We're not political people necessarily. Mm-hmm. So we don't know the full scope of what's going to happen. Right. But I'm sure it won't be good, and I'd rather not see it. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> and we can simply just hope that things get better, I guess. And then I guess these other 30%... Uh, this other 30% of the countries, I guess, pay forth their their dues yes, that they absolutely. willingly um, said they were going to in the first place. Um, and, see, that's the interesting part, though. It's not, These articles aren't saying that these countries don't have the money. It's simply mm-hmm. saying they just don't want to give the money. Absolutely. So it, it's like, like, it's not even greed. It seems like it's more... Maybe they don't see a point. Right. There's not necessarily a point. Or there, maybe there's a grudge there somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, I'm curious to see what you guys think. Mm-hmm. So send some comments. Join our Discord. Talk about it. Maybe you guys can give us information about the UN that we just don't know about. Right. Maybe there's some foreign relation strains that we are unaware of. Mm-hmm. Um, hopefully besides the one Trump has caused. Right. <laughs> and... You know, we'll kind of see it play it by ear, maybe do a follow-up on this mm-hmm. once it gets resolved in a few weeks, hopefully. Yeah. Uh, and keep it from there. I think that's it, though. What do you think, Colton? Yeah. I mean, just one more note. Um, you know, we'll definitely see how this uh, event pans out, and we'll definitely probably have a follow-up with this, assuming things get worse, which I wouldn't doubt they will. (laughs) Um, But, you know, I guess we'll see, because this obviously seems like a month-by-month scenario. Um, Mm. So, yeah, um, like Austin said, make sure you guys uh, just join the conversation. We're very curious to see what you guys uh, think about this, especially with it being a global topic. This is not just the United States topic. So we would very much like to see what other countries like Japan, China, uh, UK, what, what are you guys thinking about this? The whole UN not getting their uh, annual budget percentages. Mm-hmm. It's going to be a very interesting few weeks, man. Yeah. I can't wait. Right, right. And uh, with that, we thank you guys for listening, and we'll catch you guys in the next podcast. See you guys.